Hello, my name is Laura Marie, River Victor Peace Nopales. I'm a queer traveler, and today I'm in the Bay Area of California in the United States. I'm happy to share with you about my zine, Functionally Ill. This presentation is called Emotional Healing by Breaking Open the Truth zine making as shared authenticity. I have been making the radical mental health zine functionally ill for about 15 years. That's when I was first diagnosed with bipolar 1 with psychotic features. But I've been making zines in general for about 32 years since I was a young teenager. Making zines for that long has become a way that I process reality. So just like journaling or conversation or having a dream at night when I'm sleeping or other kinds of art making, making zines is how I've taken my experiences, integrate them with my memories and my in my body the rest of my life how I see my experience in context of my society and culture and my family and my ancestors. So making zines is one of my favorite activities and it's, a, and it's become as important to me as eating and sleeping and the basic things that I do for my survival. Making zines also helps me form community, which is a really important part of healing because liberation needs to be shared to be liberation at all. I'd like to explain how I started and maintained the zine, give an overview of the 31 issues of this zine. I'd like to explain a little about the physical production and sharing of it how zine making has helped me make sense of my experiences and heal, how my zines have affected other people, uh, also some zines, some other things that came about as a result of this specific functionally ill zine, and then zine making as a way of healing culture. So, Functionally Ill is an autobiographical radical mental health scene. I started it because when I was first diagnosed, I was afraid. I was prescribed some medications that I was afraid to take. So, I went online and I learned, I researched about the medications, and I learned about radical mental health, which is a concept that totally changed my life. I met people who thought very differently about psychiatry and medication and mental health than I had been spoken to about those things all my life. So people who thought that medication was poison or people who, who believed in bodily autonomy or people who had been abused in hospitals and who had found that there are other ways of dealing with mental health than mainstream mental health medicine. So this really changed my life. I, I was confronted with the possibility that I could be a valid person and an okay person, which had never really been a possibility to me before. I had always seen myself as damaged, defective, broken, and wrong. So many people who could see uh, mental health challenges in a new way really changed everything for me. And when I started this zine, I had written a letter to my dearest loved ones explaining what was going on with my diagnosis. And I knew it was going to be a really hard journey and I wanted people to know what was going on so that I could have their help. And so when I wrote this open letter to the people I loved, I was like, oh, this would be a great way to start a Z and I'll put this in issue one, having no idea that issue one would be just the beginning of something I've been doing for 15 years. 
So some of the themes in this scene are diagnosis, rediagnosis, trying to get in the system, applying for benefits like social security, medication, power imbalances in clinics and doctor's offices, uh, learning about how social differences and sensory sensitivities and autism can be another layer of struggle. Uh, forming a radical mental health collective and doing radical mental health collective in various groups and healing, healing culture and disability justice. The physical production has been black and white photocopies. Here's an issue from a few years ago, a couple years ago. Functional 26, more vibrant than usual. And this issue is about Breaking up with my robots, what a diagnosis is, sensory sensitivity, the hard work of performing being normal, the conclusion of my experiment with being my own girlfriend, living as a black sheep of the family, the perks of agoraphobia, healing, and community. So uh, the zine in general is about radical mental health and then Every issue has specifics about what I am working on at the time that I write it. So this issue is a 32-pager. It's a little thicker than most of my zines, maybe. I did the art for this one. And then the way that I distribute it is mostly through trades and sending them in the mail to pen pals. So I have a lot of pen pals who I met through zines and zine trades, and a lot of them really like my zines, so I just send most of them to those people. I used to sell on Etsy, which is a common platform for selling crafts and handmade things, but it was very difficult for that to make sense for me as far as cost effectiveness goes, because I, I charged very little for the zines, which means that I was making a lot of trips to the post office and doing a lot of packaging things up for not much uh, payoff. Also, I much prefer not selling zines. I prefer giving them away, trading them. I also like to leave them places like in a library or a laundromat or just give them to people who I love, who I want to share my truth with. The liminal nature of zines and how they're so ephemeral means they can be worth everything, priceless, or worth almost nothing. Something like this zine, Resisting Capitalism for Fun, number four. It's not very many pages. It probably you know costs less than a dollar to photocopy. And then the thread that I used to bind is very inexpensive. So I, I just do usually three holes and then I bind it and the I just interweave the thread in and bind it like that. It lasts longer than staples and staples rust sometimes. You know, costing less than a dollar to create means I can let it I can let go of it pretty easily and share pretty generously. So I can have a cumulative understanding of my experiences by looking back on my own zines. A good example is this one, Functionally Ill 29. I wrote this zine about half a year after my mom died. Then I kind of forgot about it. I mean, I you know, I shared it with some people and then I didn't look at it. And then I looked, I read it uh, a few days ago. And I was blown away by how hard a time I was having when I wrote it. I talk about some paranoid episodes that I had. And I talk about 
how I really felt after my mom died, and I forgot how horrible it was. I was trying to understand if the world was safe and if I was okay and if I could survive. And I talk about that in this scene, which are things that I don't hear people usually talk about. Usually when I hear people talk about death, they're saying things like, she's in a better place. I'm so glad her suffering is over. She's with God now. So these cliches that people say and to plug into the uncomfortable empty space um, that those cliches are supposed to nurture and satisfy us when in reality they're mostly just really painful to hear and probably painful to say. But this zine is full of the truth of how I really felt when my mom died and it's pretty ugly but it's also amazing to read what I was going through and see how far I've come and see what I learned during that time and who I am now versus who I was then. It's, a, it's amazing. So to have created this record of my mental health experiences that I can refer to and see, see how far I've come is amazing. And for others to be able to witness that is amazing too. The most important thing about how Functionalist helped me is when I started it, I was really scared and really isolated and didn't believe in myself at all. I thought there was something very wrong with me. And over the course of these 31 issues, I can see a transformation from believing I'm, I'm bad to seeing myself as unconditionally valid and my feelings are all 100% okay and make sense. It makes sense that I had this extreme reaction to trauma in a world that hasn't taken care of me. So I went from seeing myself as wrong and defective to seeing myself as lovable and important and pertinent and belonging, which is a huge change. How my zines have affected other people is I, I receive fan mail in the form of emails from people who have read my zines in cafes and libraries, or they were given one of my zines by a friend. They tell me how much it matters to them to feel like they're not alone and someone else has gone through these things. And like I mentioned, I have a lot of pen pals who I met through making zines. So those people tell me how I am affecting their life too. Lots of friends I share zines with, and I've been to zine events, like zine fests, and this conference. The whole subculture of zines feels very empowering, and there are a lot of people like me who would not really find a place for their writing in big publishing. Uh, what's lucrative and popular isn't what's important to me. Marketing is not, not as much my skill. The writing itself is my skill with the self-awareness and self-reflection. So zines like, th like these mean I can share my truth with many, many people which is so valuable to them and to me. This mutual strengthening is very important because I'm an outlier introvert. I have social differences, but being social with other zinesters is mostly moderated, often through the mail or email or online, and asynchronous so I can do it at my own pace in a way that makes sense for me. And it can be a beautiful way to connect. This, uh, this socializing around zines is a mutual strengthening. So when I share my truth and it's taken in and appreciated and the person feels more connected and valid, learns sometimes to see themselves as a valid person, then, and then tells me about it, like they take my understanding transform it into something that makes sense for them and then give me the feedback that I've helped them. So this this is a mutual strengthening where, where we're both 
made stronger to, to survive and to continue doing our life's work. So, um, this transformation of both of us through collaborative shared authenticity is one of the most valuable things in the world. And I think that the one of the real benefits of this zine is the depth of truth. So, like I was mentioning the death cliches, like so much about mental health, I feel that our culture and society are in denial about. And rather than face reality, there is the use of cliches to, to p try to plug the holes, the holes of the lack the lack of direct realness. So if we can have authenticity and we can have nuance, detail, long-term cumulative truth, then we can do something much better than those cliches that just try to plug the holes that are, that are where people are uncomfortable. So I think if we want to transform culture into a more healthy culture where people can actually support each other and love each other skillfully, then we need to have the truth, the truth that we see in ourselves and the truth that we share with each other. Otherwise, the culture is just going to keep running on its hamster wheel of denial or its hamster wheel of cliche. But through zines, I truly believe we can step off that hamster well and and share the best of us because that truth seeing and that um, authentic connection is healing and is beautiful and why I'm on earth not sure why you're on earth but I'm on earth to tell the truth and to use the gifts that my ancestors handed me to to make a better world. So the zines that I make have forced me to refine my values. They forced me to think about privacy. Who does it serve? They forced me to think about vulnerability. How much truth can I tell? And what will the consequences be? I've developed a very DIY view of success because because of my outlier qualities mean I'm not going to find a mainstream form of success. And, and a lot of times when people don't really want to tell the truth, it has to do with fear of retaliation, like career retaliation. What will my next employer think if I say such and such publicly? So by deciding to just step out of those parameters and this is what my life is for, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to worry about that theoretical future employer. I'm just going to do and say what really makes sense to do and say because that's what culture needs. Then, then I'm placing myself in a precarious position sometimes, but that's what I'm choosing to do because that's what I'm here for. There are many one-off scenes that have come up, come about as a result. Uh, functionally ill, this scene is called How Not to Domestic Violence Anyone. It's a valuable zine because it is written to address the would-be abuser of how not to abuse. A lot of people have found it special. And uh, the truth about mental health is not something you're going to hear from a doctor or a drug company or a clinic's liability statement. The truth about mental health is something you're gonna hear from the people, the actual people who are considered crazy, such as myself. So, so hearing and sharing these truths can benefit a lot of people. And if many of, m many of us are telling the truth and sharing it and doing our own individual healing, that can lead to a collective healing where the culture can become much more functional and real about what we're experiencing with mental health and with emotions and feelings in general and just being a human. 
So thank you for hearing this presentation. My email address is robotmad at gmail.com. My Instagram is x, trikesluts, x. Please feel free to reach out to me to instigate a zine trade or to talk about these topics.